the books that I did read, I really, really, really enjoyed. Like, they were really, really good books. Hello beautiful people and welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you guys are new here, my name is Gianna Leanne and today it is the end of the month so we are doing my November monthly reading wrap up. So, I'm gonna cut right to the chase with you guys. This month was not the best month for me, reading books-wise. I didn't read too many books, but the books that I did read, I really, really, really enjoyed. Like, they were really, really good books. I'm still gonna share these with you guys, even though I didn't read too many. They were good ones. Like, I'm really happy that I read them. Also, Take a look at the beautiful Christmas tree. Absolutely love this tree. We are known for having a beautiful pink tree in this house because we love pink. Anyways, before we get into this, make sure you like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. I would love for you guys to join the family. But in total, I read four books this month, two of them being physical copies, and then two of them were on Kindle Unlimited. I really took advantage of my Kindle Unlimited this month, and that makes me really happy because even though I want to go out and buy the physical copies of the books I read over there, I'm still happy that I had access to those, and I highly recommend Kindle Unlimited in general. Like, it's such a good app, and it's such a good resource for, for readers. Okay, the first book I read was Good Girl, Bad Blood by Holly Jackson. I ended up rating this a 4.5 out of 5 stars, you guys. I did include this in a reading vlog along with the other book I read. So if you want to see all my reactions and in detail thoughts throughout the book, make sure you guys go watch that video. But yeah, I loved this book. It was so good. Personally, way better in my opinion than the first one in the series because this is the second one. I now know I need to pick up the third one ASAP. Since it is the second one in the series, I don't want to give you guys too much, even though in my opinion, it was so different than the first one. This one does deal with a different mystery that Pip is trying to solve basically, but the stakes are so much higher with this one because the person that goes missing in this one is close to her and she actually loves very, very much. Like the last one, it was Andy Bell and she just went to school with her, so, but she didn't actually like really know her like closely. So this one is so much more intense. And along with that, the whole suspense aspect in this book was so much better in my opinion. I was gripping onto the edge of my seat way more in this one than the first one. And I feel like it was also a lot creepier. Like the first first one was a little bit sad, I can't lie, especially the whole Barney scenario in the first one. I mean, if you've read that book, you know what I'm talking about. Like, I cried at that, but this one just gave me super creepy, spooky vibes, and I think I liked that more, surprisingly. Like, I was genuinely scared for Pip throughout this whole entire book, basically. And if you did read the first one, you obviously know about Pip and Ravi. Their chemistry in this book was so much more, and I loved that. I feel like that lacked, I said that in my reading vlog, I feel like it was still good, but I feel like it wasn't enough for me so this one took it to the next level on that aspect as well I know in the first one they were just getting together and stuff but this one guys you really got to see their personalities and their love for each other and kind of just all the cute vibes you know so mix that little bit of romance subplot with the mystery that she's trying to solve and oh my gosh it was just so good I don't know why I didn't rate it a five star but honestly I'm happy with a 4.5 and I genuinely am so excited to pick up the first one I cannot wait the next book I read and probably my favorite book I've read this month, The Nanny by Lana Ferguson. I rated this a five stars, you guys. In the reading vlog, I did not shut up about this book. Literally, my reactions were so raw and you genuinely got to see how much I love this book. And I also mentioned that literally, I have not felt this way for a book since I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. And if you know, that is my favorite book of all time. And even though these books are two completely different things, like completely, it's still, gave me those vibes and that love if that makes sense oh my mommy's calling me hold on hello but you guys can watch that reading vlog to get all the inside scoop. But basically, the plot of this book drew me in the most. That is why I wanted to pick up this book in the first place. And honestly, <laughs> it's kind of funny, but so different at the same time. I've explained it so many times on my channel, but basically it follows our main character, Cassie. She just lost her job and she's just kind of struggling. She's in a tight spot. She's currently living with her best friend that's 73 years old named Wanda. She's, the, she's probably my favorite character in the whole entire book. So she's living with her now, which is her neighbor at her apartment that she lost because she has no money now but there's a nanny job that opened up and it's this really hot single dad and he needs some help with his daughter and yeah so she decides to apply for it but Cassie definitely has a past with some side hustles of doing an OnlyFans and let's just say Aiden the single hot dad and Cassie they know each other from a different time and you'll get to see that throughout the book but honestly like this book was funny it was cute it was steamy it was heartwarming it gave me all the feelings 
feelings that I wanted from a romance book that it could ever give me. So I highly recommend this. It's honestly probably one of my favorite romance books, which is so bizarre for me to say because you guys know how much I love the Addicted and Twisted series. Like those are my top tier, but this one is definitely, definitely, definitely added, which I never thought I would say in my life. And also I know this is kind of like a reader thing. Some people don't like reading about kids. I know I personally, it just kind of can get cringy or annoying, but the kid in this book, she was a freaking sweetheart. She was hilarious. She was so bossy and like kind of standoffish at the start. And it was just super, super enjoyable to watch her kind of warm up to Cassie and just kind of accept her and stuff. It was so heartwarming. Oh my gosh. But obviously it's not all cupcakes and rainbows. We obviously have a lot of tension, a lot of drama with the single dad side of the family because obviously they were through a lot. That's why he needs a nanny. I'm not going to share too much, but there's a lot of tension with other relatives and kind of accepting Cassie and stuff. So it was really enjoyable to see that drama kind of explode. It kind of added another aspect to the book other than just the three characters and the romance that kind of tied it all together. It was super enjoyable. Honestly, I didn't want anything more from this book. It was absolutely perfect. And I just highly recommend. This book needs to be talked about more. And then the next book I read was on Kindle Unlimited. I read The Fine Print by Lauren Asher. I was reading this for so long. I just never gotten around to like really sitting down and binging it. But let me tell you, after I hit the halfway point in that book, I binged it in that night because honestly, it was so good. And that's a lot for me to say because I've never read a workplace romance before. I've never read like that scenario kind of. It was very unique to me and new. So I was nervous going into it and I wasn't really like hooked to it at the very beginning. So I didn't think it was bingeable. But after I got to know some of the characters, after I got to know the plot and the settings and stuff, it was just too enjoyable and I just had to finish it. But this one basically follows Zara and Rowan. They are an interesting couple, let's just say that. Rowan is the CEO slash head of Dreamland, which is an amusement park. It's his company that he runs that's owned as a family. And Zara is his worker. She's like one of the creators that helps renovate the rides, kind of comes up with new ideas to advance the park and stuff like that. But Rowan doesn't see it coming when he absolutely falls for Zara. And let's just say Rowan is the type that is very standoffish. He's very, very rude. I'm trying to think of a better word than asshole, but he is an so let's just be honest here. He just treats his employees so bad, but he has a special soft spot for Zara, which made me enjoy it so much more. And Zara kind of is able to crack his cold heart, basically. And it was just so cute because you obviously have the starting of the book where they're like hate each other and they're always in each other's faces and trying to pick fights and stuff like that. But as they get to know each other, that kind of changes and it's just so good. Like I genuinely really, really enjoyed this. This is also part of a series. I need to stop getting my in the series because I end up loving the book so much and then I want to continue that series obviously so yeah it's a part of a series but I definitely want to pick up the second and third they both are on Kindle Unlimited I'm pretty sure so that's super super convenient for me if I don't want to buy the physical copies right now and this book was honestly really freaking steamy like I know it's kind of known Lauren Asher is definitely known for her books to be pretty steamy but this one was like a good steamy it wasn't too cringy or it wasn't all smut because I hate when books are like that it was just kind of the perfect amount that kind of put the whole story together if that makes sense but yeah I really really enjoyed Lauren Asher's writing she definitely is a newer author that I would love to pick up more books from just the whole setting of kind of being in like an amusement park it kind of gave me flashbacks from when I was a kid because it gave all those feelings of like loving being at a theme park and kind of just in that vibe of having fun and stuff like that so it was just a really good feel good read but also very drama packed lots of tension lots of steaminess it was just really really good so i don't know what else i could say about this book because i just truly enjoyed it oh my gosh i didn't even say what i rated this i rated this up five stars you guys i don't think i said that that just tells you something two five star reads back to back that's just perfect. Like I said, I honestly had such a good reading month. And then the last book I read is definitely not known. I kind of picked it up on a whim and because of the Goodreads reviews, which I will get into, but I read Ecstasy by KV Rose. You probably have never heard of it because it's definitely not a book that's super trendy on TikTok or anything like that. But honestly, I don't know how I got this in my Goodreads want to read, but when I was browsing Kindle Unlimited to find the next book to read, I came across this and I was like, hmm, I've been wanting to read this for a long time. So I looked it up on Goodreads because I've never heard of it or anyone talk about it and every single review of this book said how up this book is 
And like me going into it, I was like, oh, I love the Devil's Night series. I love like dark romance and suspense and stuff like that. So I thought this was gonna be completely up my alley. But let me tell you when it took it to the next level of dark and messed up. Like I thought Penelope Douglas's books were like top tier of insane. This book tops it by so much like I can't even explain it to you guys. I rated this a 4.75 out of 5 stars I didn't think it deserved a 5 star because in my opinion I felt like it didn't really have a plot But overall I just enjoyed it so much and a lot of Goodreads reviews said that too Is that even though the book didn't even make sense It was just so messed up But it had this certain hold over them to finish and binge the book and that's exactly what happened to me too I literally started this book two days ago and I finished it this morning because I was just so obsessed with it And like I said, it doesn't really have a plot. It just basically follows three main characters, Zara, Alex, and Ellie, and each of them have their own struggles, let's just say that. I don't know how to explain it without giving too much because everything is just kind of confusing, but there's a lot of trigger warnings for this book. I would say that there's just so much going on, and there was literally a love triangle thrown in there, and I was like, what? What am I reading about? Like one thing would happen and then the next thing would and then everything would just keep going and going and going And I was like, what is going on right now? This book is absolutely insane So please check trigger warnings on this book. Honestly, it is definitely not a book for everyone to pick up a lot of people in the reviews Hello, a lot of people in the reviews actually DNF would this book because they just couldn't deal with how crazy it was getting But yeah, I just really enjoyed the darkness of it. Zara is struggling with a drug addiction, Alex is dealing with anger issues and just figuring out what he wants to do with his life basically with a lot of past like family issues. And then Ellie, he's just a mystery. Ellie is just a character that you have no idea what's gonna happen. Each character has their flaws, each character has a lot of things going on and their own things that they're dealing with and it kind of like connects the three of them together with like a crazy setting. I don't know, I don't want to give too much, you just have to go into it blind. I just really enjoyed this. The writing was definitely kind of cringe at some points and kind of repetitive but that still didn't take away my love for the book so definitely recommend this at your own risk though. Like don't go into this thinking that it's gonna be a spicy dark romance because that's not what this is at all so <laughs> go into it at your own risk and just see if you enjoy it because there's a lot of mixed opinions through goodreads and stuff but yeah i really enjoyed it but then again i really like dark books so yeah, it was just something up my alley and definitely not for everyone. I also completely forgot to include that I read The Girls at 17 Swan Street. I ended up rating this a 4 out of 5 stars. It was so good. I'm so sorry I forgot to include this when I filmed this. But yeah, those are the books that I read in the month of November. It definitely wasn't the best reading month, not the worst. I didn't read that many books, but the books that I did read, I truly obviously enjoyed. And sometimes I like those months where I'm not reading just to read. I'm reading to honestly like really, really enjoy the books that I'm reading. So it was a good month of my books. Obviously, I am hoping for better next month, but with Vlogmas, which is part of today's video. There's obviously a lot on my plate, so hopefully I'll get some good books done, Christmas books specifically, but we'll just have to see, so. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video and seeing all the books that I read, talking about some that aren't like really, really popular on book talk and in the book community because sometimes I feel like that can get super repetitive and me personally, when I watch videos like this about books, I love to find new books that aren't heavily talked about because I feel like it can get so repetitive. Hopefully you guys found some newer books. I'll also have the link to the Vlogmas playlist down below so you guys can watch all of Vlogmas depending on what day we're at so you guys can keep up with that. And also while you're down there, don't forget to check out my Patreon to join the Patreon family because we have a lot of fun over there. They get to see so many behind the scenes you guys like literally I share my whole entire life on there so make sure you guys check that out so you guys don't miss out on things like that but other than that let me know down below all the books that you guys read in the month of November I'd love to know what you guys are picking up and and your ratings for them too. drop that down below as well but other than that I really hope you guys are having an amazing wonderful day Merry Christmas and I'll see you next time bye You are so needy. I mean, it, I mean, for.